Hey, hey, what is up, spiritual hooligan? Why do you see life the way you do? Why do you limit yourself and hold yourself back? See, I propose that you believe things about yourself, about life, about other people that you can't prove. In fact, no one can prove these things, but that doesn't stop you from believing them, does it? Or worse, it doesn't stop you from defending your unprovable beliefs like they're life or death, like somehow it really means something to believe what you believe. Today, I'm gonna let you listen in on my Epic Life Live event, and I got a little talk for you called Release Your Dogma. My name is Matthew Ferry, and I am bringing you your daily enlightenment. It is your moment to pause, to slow down, to get connected to enlightened perspectives. I wanna help you to quiet your mind and restore your peace. So limiting beliefs, how do you get rid of them? Why do we believe the things that we believe that aren't true, that aren't false, but why do we believe these things that limit us? We can see them limiting us oftentimes and we still believe them. Why do we believe the things that make us feel bad or create conflict in our life? If you're gonna make things up, you might as well make things up that feel good and empower you. And that's not about being irrational. That's not about um, being destructive. That's actually you, a high-minded person, recognizing that you're believing things that aren't serving you and starting to believe things that do serve you. And I trust that you're the kind of person that you want to do well in the world. So this isn't about relativism. This is about you honoring that what's inside of you is a person who is automatically good for the world. So let's tune in because I want to help you to bust your own personal dogma. So here's the deal, everybody. The deal is, is that there's no way to prove if your beliefs about yourself or the world are true. There's no way to prove it. But does that stop you from believing it? No. In fact, does that stop you from arguing with other people about it? Facebook is so funny. All I got to do is put up something a little crazy on Facebook. And then people get in there like, well, you don't know what it's on the bed. And it's like, oh, really? Do you have some data that backs it up? I don't need data. We are literally living in about 99.99999% denial and about 0.00001% reality. And our goal over this weekend is to shift that equation and get into the reality. And you want to know what the reality is? You don't know shit. <laughs> you know what the reality is about Matthew Ferry? I don't know shit. You and I are the same. We are flashy. We got our flashlight. We're shining it into the darkness and we're hoping to see what's out there. And then we're making up stories about what we see. Welcome to life. The rapid enlightenment process is about you getting to a place where you recognize nothing you believe is true. So if nothing I believe is true, why not choose things to believe that strengthen me, empower me, and make me feel good? Why do you keep believing things that make you feel bad? Turn to the person next to you and just say, cultural conditioning. And that's really what we got going on. We have cultural dogma. So I'll just read you some cultural dogma. Are you ready? Men work, men, women raise babies, get a job, start a family, save for retirement. You have to put your kids' needs above your own. Find a good man who can take care of you. A woman's life isn't complete until she finds a man. <laughs> dogma. Made up stories. None of it is true. And if you look at all those statements, they predominantly come out of survival. Most dogma is actually just a survival best practice. That's it. It's just a survival best practice. But I'm going to remind you, the chances of you dying through some means other than age or food are pretty slim. So it's really, really important for you to give up 
anything related to survival. It doesn't mean being stupid. You're still, you still have a survival mechanism. So like if you walk in, in the street and a car comes whizzing by, I promise you, your body will handle the situation and back you up. But you don't have to be fretting and lamenting. How about atheist dogma? There is no dog. Well, that's, that's the dyslexic atheist dogma. There is no God. There's no purpose to life. You have birth, you have life, you have death. They're all completely random. There's no reason for your existence whatsoever. It's all dogma. We don't know. The atheist is just as full of it as you are. Everybody got that? The atheist is just as full of it as you are. Then you have the religious dogma, which really gets wacky, right? You have to follow the rules in the books. God will judge you. God will be offended if you say the wrong things. Sex is dirty. Sex is sacred. Sex is private. Sex, sex, sex. Apparently, God is not into sex. This is what I have learned. No sex around God. But in the end, your mind literally just fills in the gaps. And here's the thing to know. Look at that. Do you realize there is no, there's no triangles on the screen? There's no triangles up there. But your mind fills in the gaps, right? You you fill in the gap. I'm born. Where do I come from? Turn to the person next to you and say, fill in the gap. Yeah, because guess what? You have filled in the gap whether you want to or not. Your mind just fills in the gap, just makes up a story. I'm born. Where do I come from? I die. Where do I go? Why am I here? What is the purpose of life? So this is something I do want you to write, and I want you to keep this close to your heart for the rest of your life. Are you ready? Here it is. The ultimate death of the drunk monkey. I can't answer life's fundamental questions, but that doesn't stop me from making up a story and defending it like I know the answers. So like I said, the rapid enlightenment process recontextualizes the fundamental questions about the meaning of life. And it strives to create the most empowering context possible. And what I have begun to discern is that your physiology will tell you what is empowering and what is not. That your physiology, when you are in a thriving state, and this is so important, when you're in a thriving state, and you're exposed to something that is a survival framework, your physiology will fail. But if you're in a a survival state, and you're exposed to something that is survival-oriented, you'll be strengthened. And you're going to see this happening over and over and over and over. I'm going to say things that are going to put you into a survival state. And when they do, your body will be strengthened by everything. And I just want you to know that a stress response has been scientifically proven to do what to your health? To kill you, essentially. If you stay in a stressed state, it will ultimately destroy your body. The the most effective state for you to be in is essentially an all-is-well homeostasis. And when you are in an all-is-well homeostasis and we say something that is a survival-based idea, your body will fail. And this is a really amazing thing. It's It's a really amazing tell. And it pierces right through the denial mechanism. Okay, so let's wrap this up. My question to you today is, What beliefs are you going to let go of today so that you can be free to live the life that you desire? Leave me a comment below. I really want to hear from you. My name is Matthew Ferry, author of Quiet Mind, Epic Life. And I would love for you to like this video because when you like the video, you're telling all these platforms, hey, this is something that should be spread and other people should see it. And by the way, it's working. So thank you for your help. Like this video, share it with your your fellow spiritual hooligans, comment. And if you want, you could subscribe to my channel. 
I put out a new daily enlightenment every single day. You can also join us over on Facebook. We've got a group called the Spiritual Hooligans. Search us, ask to get involved. I'll put the link down below. Thanks again for tuning in to this daily enlightenment.